Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folari. My guest this morning, straight off, uh, Comrade Adeola Shoueta, uh, National Coordinator, Democracy, Vanguard, and a keen observer of the politics. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. Good morning. Indeed. And then our dear friend, Dr. Luke Onyekekeya, uh, who is a member of the editorial board of The Guardian. Needless to say, that is the kind of man that will indeed keep an eye on the polity. Thank okay, you. gentlemen, thank you very thank much you for, for coming on. Um, this whole brouhaha about whether or not there still is subsidy. Of course, we, 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 we say that there isn't subsidy anymore. That's the idea that we, uh, that's the ideal. That's where we want to go. Um, but it would appear the National Assembly thinks that the executive, you know, no doubt with knowledge or if not connivance of the executive, have indeed been paying subsidy without coming through them, no appropriation for it. So being very simplistic about it, I think the NMPC managing director has explained that, well, yeah, you know, 26 Naira has indeed been, you know, they've been paying 26 Naira uh, due to what is referred to as differentials in land landing costs. And, um, approved selling price, but it doesn't see it as a subsidy. The National Assembly says, well, that's a subsidy from, in our book, and so they need to be probed. Uh, let me get your impressions first. Comrade, let me start with you. What, what, what are your thoughts on this whole idea about NNPC says, yeah, money's having paid, but it's not what we would call a subsidy. Well, fundamentally, I think uh, the whole issue of subsidy or no subsidy is a reflection of deepening crisis of leadership, of capitalist leadership in Nigeria, because it gives uh, a serious picture of children of butchers that are now hitting bone. We should not be here, because had it been the government, successful government in Nigeria, leadership, and this current one too, has been responsible. Nigeria is, is a crude oil producer country. And at it being, our refineries are functional and many have been built. We won't come to this uh, Sorry, pass. serious mm. uh, pass of uh, subsidy or no subsidy. However, you see, economics is, is such a romantic subject that you can say one thing in different languages, depending on who is saying it, and okay. of course, who is interpreting it. Back to two, three years ago, Mr. President, then as a candidate, and the party said they did not believe in subsidy. And of course, that the, even the whole press then, as 80, I think 86 or so, mm. Naira per litre mm. was even too high mm -hmm. that it had to come down. It was part of their campaign. So if they now got there and saw something different or similarly different, I think open governance detects that they should come back transparently and with all honesty to explain, explain the situation. situation to Nigerians. Because okay. I discovered it, it, that... I beg your pardon. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. going to come back to you. Okay. But um, I do want to hear from Dr. Onyeke Kaya on, on this same question. Uh, interestingly, along the lines you were, you know, traversing, uh, President Buhari, his party, you know, in the campaign had indeed made the observations that he had said. Um, but the, as later this morning, I think on the front page of The Nation, there is Ashwaju Bolame Tinubu saying that, you know, uh, the whole issue of subsidy needs to be reformed. Uh, would, would you say this is something of a, you know, backstepping or it's in line with what Comrade uh, Shueton has just said that, look, if things are not the way they seem, then maybe you'd better be open about it. Although they have told us that uh, the pigsty is unimaginable uh, once they got into office. Thank you very much. Um, I am always I am bothered by the fact that every year, every time, every now and then we are discussing intractable problems in Nigeria. We are always talking about problems that have been there for years, unending. Still, there's no solution. 
or there appears to be no solution. So just like my comrade said, mm. is, it, is, it is very, very sad that we are talking about subsidy or no subsidy. For me, that is effect. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's part of the effect of not doing the real thing, the right thing. Mm -hmm. So the point is, so long as this country has mismanaged the oil resources, which has driven us to the point of we must import fuel for us to drive our cars and power our energy needs, then anybody, there, there will be no end to this uh, question of subsidy, whether it is real or not. Whether through the back door yes, or through the front door. Yes, whether through the front door or through the back door. The problem will continue to be there. So part of the reason, maybe I'm just taking a stab, a guess of it, is, is what you gentlemen and millions of other Nigerians will refer to of the lack of a quote-unquote sincerity of purpose. Um, the fact that things such as you are complaining about that needn't have been as intractable as this continue to be so simply because there's so many compromises that have to be made. The right thing is the right thing, that's different. Uh, however, uh, we get to understand that, you know what, politically, life isn't black and white. There's a whole, maybe one million shades of gray in between pure black and pure white, so it's hardly ever a yes or no issue. You can witness that in so many different aspects of our lives, whether it is fighting terrorism, whether it is Fulani cattle herdsmen, you know, and on and on. I don't know. I wonder if we're going to be able to make any traction in as long as we, haven't, we don't have this, uh, forgive me for going there, uh, sort of a national spiritual rebirth where, look, can we call a spade a spade, please? That's not going to be possible, really, is it? We are, we in Nigeria, Nigeria is operating on ad hoc basis. Every day. How does that, what, what does that yes. mean? What, ad what, hoc what, basis? It, what it means is, you see, you, you quoted what the newspaper headline said. We are going to reform a oh, sub, subsidy, it, whatever. Wait, wait, it's a, it's a know, sort of it's advice. It's, it's a, a plea. It's advice. Now, why haven't we had a, 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 a sustainable framework for dealing with this problem? Why must. Uh, well, that, that headline is coming up because since uh, December we've been in trouble, mm -hmm. no petrol. Mm -hmm. So why should we be talking about we are going to reform? Did Nigeria start today? Was oil discovered here yesterday? And then again, one of the things that we were commenting on was the fact that that December drought, fuel drought happened. Uh, at the worst time possible. In fact, Mr. President had gone on there and yeah. said that these were saboteurs. And uh, 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 look, six months ago, it has been said, we, we're not new to Nigeria, we're all Nigerians. We've lived, grown up in Nigeria. We know how things run. This is supposed to be a government of change. Now, in June, we knew that December will come six months later. If, I don't know, people are pragmatic, people are strategic. You can see, you can, you can see, it's not too far yeah. down the line, sure. six months from now. Sure. In case any opposition wanted to get up to some hanky-panky or mischief, this is what we will do. Was, apparently, none of that was done. And so we were all caught pants down. And uh, one wonders if it really should be so. If, or is it just that the problems are so many that people can't really focus on that which needs to be focused on? Well, basically, you... You seem to forget that uh, when we left the so-called uh, clueless uh, government, <laughs> now to the lethargic uh, government, the concept of change has not been properly defined. Because if you say you are changing, you must have alternative arrangement to almost all mm -hmm. sectors mm -hmm. of governance, mm -hmm. which is lacking. And how do I mean? If the, the same, this government believes, like the previous one, in structural adjustment program, deregulation, commercialization, privatizations of all commanding heights of the economy, including oil and gas, 
And this is where the problem comes from. Had it been that the government's orientation, which cannot be anyway, being a pro-capitalist government, is that, look, this oil is here. We, 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 I mean, this is what we have. We want to make sure that we produce petrol, this one, other things in this country. And this is our vision. And we want to make sure that we have the least cost, I mean, uh, oil and gas products in the world. Gaddafi was never a socialist, even though he said he was an African socialist. But mark you, I was, I was in Libya. You see what oil means to people, economy, development. You talk of housing, talk of standard of living, talk of education. To those countries that know what it takes to put people on the agenda, not profit interest of just few individuals, oil is a blessing. But to those countries that feel that only the profit of the few individuals matters, yeah. to a country that believes that only one man, we should wait on one man to do what? 180 million people with huge resources in care of God, they cannot do. We continue in Babash Shia's syndrome. Yeah. That, is, that is it. Yeah, but, 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 but this whole matter about the practical realities or practical political realities, once you get into office, yeah. uh, they, they find themselves surrounded by this because they have to make traction. It's not a military setup. Uh, there must be consensus. And this is part of what the National Assembly is saying right now, that. We, we've just discovered that you've been doing what you've been doing and you don't have a right to do that. This is democracy. You couldn't have told the military that. Um, is the National Assembly really at fault? And is anybody at fault in this whole matter? NMPC, I think, has said that what you are calling subsidy is not quite the way we see it. But that's, that's what do you think? Well, the National Assembly is an institution. Yeah. It's there. It has some jobs to do. Mm -hmm. And part of it is this oversight function. So for them... And so it's asking for appropriation yes, that is not yes, appropriated they are, they, You know, for them to be at a, at a point, I mean, at the, at the corner, to observe what is happening. So they are, from that perspective, they are right mm -hmm. to say, ah, there is trouble or there is problem. Mm -hmm. What is happening? What's going on? There's an infringement somewhere. There is an infringement somewhere. They are right from that perspective. But for me, they seem to be jumping the gun because the problem is... Fuel scarcity. If there is fuel, all this question of uh, subsidy or not, that wouldn't arise. They wouldn't have come up. So even right now, when I'm talking to you, the fuel is not readily available in the, the filling station. The situation hasn't returned to it completely normal. It has not returned normal. to normal. Mm. I passed five filling stations from my house to the office in Guardian. None of them is selling fuel since uh, two, three days now. It was when I got to K2. Um, uh, what do you call it there? So, somewhere near that I got fuel. There was no fuel in my car. So the point is, the, 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 the problem at hand has to be settled first for me. There has to, the National Assembly should be much more interested in bringing normalcy to this fuel situation. Mm. Once there is normalcy, then you now start looking what caused this problem. What brought about this, uh, you know, wahala, you know. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, but now, that we'll now get asking what brought the wahala when the problem has not been solved, for me, is putting the cat before the horse. Mm. How about what Comrade uh, Shoyatan said about um, uh, you can't blame anybody for looking at the ground, as we say in Yoruba, you know, looking at the ground, the evidence before you is that um, the interests of a few uh, for, it seems that those ones are being paid attention to much more than the interests of all and sundry. Sure. Now, that, now, let me tell you, let me tell you one thing that shocked me. I was reviewing some of these neighboring country universities. I have, uh, I, you know, I, I got their economics, BSc economics, in Cotonou here. I was reviewing the, I was going through the program, let me see what. And I saw a course, I think year two or year three, and the title of the course is Mismanaged Economy. Oh. Hmm. And this is Nigeria. So. Actually. Yes, yes. I, I'm, they included I'm, our names. I'm, yes, it's Nigeria. 
Nigeria is a model of a mismanaged economy being studied by the world. And that took my mind to when I was in the university here, mm. Lagos, mm. who were studying Japan as a model of economy that should every, every country should. So you can see the big contrast. Now, if you want to know how not to run an economy, go and study Nigeria. What is happening here is, is, a, is, a, is a complex it is, So that's the problem, because this, problem. This, this APC government actually arrived on the ticket of change. Good. That's what everybody, I would guess, that's what most people bought into. But, oh, at last, at last, there's someone who's not going to stand for the way it is. The president said it's not going to be business as usual. Oh, hooray, and on and on. It, we were really primed for um, a, a tomorrow that's not like yesterday sure. and day before yesterday. But, but here we are. Yeah, you also know that... Uh, a change may also mean that a team is not using its first 11 and also using second 11, which means it's still within the change within a team. So change qualitatively has not been there. For those politically conscious people, know that change cannot be done when you are still protecting, defending the interests of few. Who owns these so-called oil blocks? Why not publicly owned? These are Nigerian assets. What are they looking there for? Well, I no, 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 these are, no, no, these are basic. That is where free market, no. uh, capitalistic no. society, and uh, the, the democracy, that the that's where all these things are going to now line up. That is the problem. And if, they, if, if I'm the president of Nigeria now, coming on the basis of Perhaps a socialist change. The first thing you have to do is for the public, to, for the government, the nation, take back our weight from few hands. Then the solution commences from there. Mm. Tell me, tell me, how can just less than 0.5% Nigerians command total 85% of the common weight? And you still want a better solution. It's not possible. Well, okay, indeed. This is from a it's socialist not, it's, perspective. It's not, yes. You know, and uh, that is your forte. That is your area. Me, That's your philosophy. I understand that. Mm. I have been fighting, protesting since 1988 on this oil subsidy when I was in university. 88, 98, that's almost 30 years. The same word, when Baba did that use subsidy, in fact, at a stage, he said, okay, the solution is let's have commercial buses, separate price. Uh, private uh, cars, separate price. At the end of the day, what happened? No solution. Because you are still operating mm. within the context of pro-capitalist economy. Oh, okay, that's indeed, okay, that's one way to look at it, and that's certainly the way through you know, socialist prism. We understand that. But because Nigeria um, has not bought into any socio so, so, socialist ideology, you might have, you know, People? They brought it to it, 86, Cookie, Cookie Commission, 86. Mm. When they went around, it submitted to Bangida that the overwhelming majority of Nigerians want a socialist economy. But Bangida ignored that. Okay. Because the really the elite yes. didn't want it. Yes. So what that means is that what we are having today is the economic interest of the few minority mm. launching it over the majority. Okay. That is where the problem comes in. Okay, let me, let me go back to you, Dr. Nyakake. Look, you said in, in neighboring Kutunu, they're actually studying Nigeria as a, uh, model, uh, of as a, a model of a mismanaged, mismanaged economy. Uh, yes. uh, economy. Yes. Um, I wonder, you, 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 both of you would have studied, you pondered the matter of Nigeria. Uh, perhaps one can't make haste too fast in Nigeria if they are in intent on keeping the entity, the geographical region we, we, we call Nigeria, keeping it intact and one, uh, people have to go slow, is probably one of the things that is maybe affecting this whole, I, I described the example about it's black and white to most people what needs to be done. But those who are in charge of the actual doing know that compromises have to be made. You ask anybody, of course anybody would say nobody should, we, we, we can't have a few, a handful of people who have cornered the wealth of this nation, albeit quote unquote legitimately 
um, you, you can't have that. That shouldn't be fair. Uh, you can just say that. But um, not very, uh, certainly those people who are enjoying that power are not going to be behind it. Um, thank you very much. Um, bef before, I say, before I say something on that, I want to talk about this uh, socialist capitalist. Okay. Maybe. I think we should be, 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 we should be careful the way we use the word capitalist in the strictest sense of it. Reason is, America is always said to be the number one capitalist country in the world. But at the same time, America has a lot of social safety needs or nets that you know, people fall back on. I lived in Japan, I worked in Japan, which is also another capitalist. Now, that place, the people have a lot of social safety nets. So there is, uh, there is, uh, there is uh, having, with all those kind of experience, I find it difficult to say this country is capitalist. Capitalist in the sense we thought mm. is, you know, is just, uh, you know, money, 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 yeah, money. Yeah, a few yeah, people yeah, yeah. gathering all the money. No government that is responsible fails to take care of the citizens, uh -huh. whether capitalist or socialist. That's one. Then the other aspect is, the problem in Nigeria did not start today. For me, as far as I'm, I'm you know, I write, I'm, you know, I comment, Nigeria's problem, especially with this oil, started the day the first oil was brought out from the belly of the earth. How it was used, how it was managed, is the bedrock of all the problems we have today. If you go back to history, oil was discovered, at, uh, explored at Oloibri, yeah. present uh, uh, by Essa State. Now, who were the people in charge? It was the British. Uh -huh. They were the people in charge then. Now, that was 1958, when this oil was struck and explored. Now, 58, 59, then by 1960, our own people took, took over the reins of power. Now, what did they do at that point in time? Now, I have tried to study an NPC vis-a-vis -vis Petrobras in Brazil. I discovered that um, Brazil discovered oil 1953, and they came up with a policy that oil is for Brazilians. Uh -huh. Oil is for Brazil. Do you know that it is Brazilians that manage all the oil, whatever, you know, they, they, they run the oil, whatever, resources of, of Brazil since 1953. So and what's different between, for example, Brazil and Nigeria in this regard, the regard of a natural asset and people committing that this belongs to the nation? Yes. What's the big difference between Brazil and Nigeria? Now, in the, the, the big difference is that Brazil saw the oil as belonging to the people. And so, just as you mentioned earlier, all the wealth that coming from the oil, you know, is plowed back in service, you know, uh, you know providing for the people in all ramifications. Because why, why ask in the question In our that? own case, mm -hmm. from day one, a few people cornered this oil. It was all about profit. It's all about profit for a few people. For a few people. And it has remained like that. If you go back and, you know, it, you know many people, many Nigerians don't know how this oil has been, you know, stolen over the years is of recent. We started, many people started hearing before. And the worst part is that the word <laughs> stolen you use, yes. there are well, many yes. Nigerians yes. that could not use that word. Yes. They'll, They'll say, what do you, well, it's no, a hustle no, no, no. now. They, 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 it's a, they, it's chance. Country. It's hustle. I was there at the no, right no, no, time. No, no. That's a legitimate hustle. They the oil money over the years. Over the but because these words, but because these words will not be used officially. It's stealing. But, but like I told you, economic is a romantic. But, uh, yeah, but if you use that word, then you're going to have to like, do something like, about like, it. Like they will say now, if a common man go and steal something, no should he steal it. But if they steal, misappropriation. Or they call it subsidy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about class analysis of events. Yes. Look. So how do we get out of this problem? Nationalize all the oil blocks. Nationalize everything. Send the uh, send the thieves away, so that. Let people know this is our oil. Let the refinery start working. Look, you are dealing with effects. You are not dealing with the causes.
Yes. Because we are coming back. Yes. We are coming yes. back. Because what we have is we have the oil wealth concentrated in, in, in those yeah. funds. And then you have some of them being quite generous if you were to look at the list, you know, of what they've you know, given to back to society. Yeah. Uh, pressure yeah. Some, That's why they cannot. Somebody publish. has put to me hundred million, two hundred oh, yeah. million, three hundred million dollars, <laughs> you know, philanthropy. <laughs> you know, on what is <laughs> really philanthropism. Um you see, make people poor. You steal heavily from people, they are poor, and you start giving out 0.00.1. Uh, but we're good. We're, 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 but we're good with it. I don't want to. Because if we weren't good with it, go, <laughs> I imagine that we would not. Governance is not run on the basis of philanthropism or charity. I know. No, it's a serious business. That is why today the two parties in power cannot publish their campaign fund. They can't. Which is another aspect. The market, the, mm -hmm. the, the old marketers will continue to do what they are doing because the system allows it. They are coming back to do their campaigns, campaign funds. They are coming back. There is no way they want to deal with them drastically yeah, but because the, they but, too but, owns but, the old blocks. But, 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 but the president Let's did get say those who owns the old blocks. But, but the, pre the president did say, you know, in the height of the crisis, the fuel shortage crisis, that. This was sabotaged by some disgruntled marketers, and that they were going to be identified and appropriately addressed. And how many, how many saboteurs in Sebabangida um, have been arrested, prosecuted? It's always like that. Let's Kuku start voting for saboteurs instead of voting for government. What are you talking about? You see, whenever there is, whenever there is failure in <laughs> governance here, they always look at saboteurs. You know. Some, you know, the government is always mm, mm. blaming somebody, some group, a cartel or whatever, is causing the trouble. The question is, who is importing fuel? Is an NPC. An NPC is in charge of fuel importation at the moment. And now, how do they import it? An NPC uses the marketers. Mm -hmm. An NPC gives contract to the marketers to import on his behalf. That is the NMPC is not doing the importation directly. Not true. <laughs> it's not true. So they uh, are you, you know, okay. we, of the oil importation. Okay, we've got to go on a break now. Yes. Uh, stay with us, please. When we come back, we'll include your calls. Welcome back. Uh, we're looking at um, the rumpus between the National Assembly and uh, is it NMPC? Is it the executive now? Anyway, uh, you guys have been paying subsidy without coming through us. It's not appropriated for and that's not allowed. There needs to be a probe. NMPC has responded that we don't call what has happened a subsidy. But uh, my guest, you know, they're still here, Comrade Adiola Shueton and Dr. Luke Onyekekeya. Now, uh, Luke, you were saying that we thought we've cut out the uh, we've cut out all those people importing. NMPC has referred to itself as the sole importer in this situation. But you then said that they they actually are still relying on marketers. Are you are you very sure about that? That yes, part about yes. I got I got information this uh, December okay. at the at the peak of this fuel scarcity. Sure. The vice president Oshibanjo and uh, the minister of state. Ibe Kachuku, they were in a papa here, they were respecting. And along the line, he was interviewed. So part of the interview, he was asked why there is this shortfall mm -hmm. in, in you know, fuel importation. And uh, look, at, look at what the vice president said. He said, he was asked, what is the, wrong, what, what is the cause of the shortfall since an NPC is the sole importer of petroleum products? Okay. Okay. Then he said, First, let me explain that you are right because NMPC is doing most of the importation. But don't forget that NMPC also relies on the independent marketers and in some cases the IOCs to bring in the fuel. 
NMPC itself does not go and do the deals as it were. So it really does lie on the marketers to bring in the fuel on a contract basis. Oh. This, is, this is what is happening. Oh, oh I see. Uh, so that, that's the supporting evidence for yes. the statement you made yes. right there. So the, the marketers should not give impression <laughs> that they are at the it. corner, they don't know what is happening. <laughs> six and half a dozen. <laughs> that's the difference between six and half a dozen. We are still talking of uh, the rumpus and the capitalist team. And uh, <laughs> because the pressure they gave was the NMPC was the only one that bring fuel. So that, that the only gave to the tankers. That what we, the only thing they have with the major marketers is to use their storage tanks. That was. So we are seeing. I'm happy that uh, so, so you read that out. Uh, yeah, but but <laughs> how is this happened? Are we are we done with marketers in the, being a middleman or not? Uh, so this is this is where I go back you to see, that whole problem. We can't do you can't do without the marketers. Because they have the infrastructure, they have the technical know-how to, you know, get this fuel. NMP, there's no way NMPC will do without marketers. Mm. Yes, NMPC is NMPC doesn't have the infrastructure, kind of, that the marketers have for distribution and the, you know supply of wealth to pay people. Okay. Let me bring in Maxwell in Tema, Ghana. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Uncle Yare. Good Thank morning, dear Luke and uh, comrade there. Thank you Thank for you. calling in. Yes, um, uh, Uncle Yare, what is happening in Nigeria is quite an eye so mm -hmm. When we sit down here and look at Nigeria, we try. It's weak for Nigeria because there is a lot of corruption that is going on in all facets of leadership and the you know, structures in Nigeria. Then, for instance, in Ghana here, a judge was jailed. So many were sacked just because of 1.2 million naira equivalent. A judge was sacked in Ghana here. There are huge mounting of corruption that is happening in Nigeria that nobody has the willing or the political will to trample on those malfeasance that are going on in Nigeria. Who is checking who in Nigeria? Ghana just passed a law on their petroleum. Ghana, Ghanaians has ownership, ownership, Good. although that they are still contract is a contractual agreement with two lawyers and um, uh, they, they, they own they own they own their resources and they know how much that comes to them do nigerians know how much they export no how can individuals own mm, all your wealth in nigeria mm. is it meant for individuals mm. you see in as much as nigeria is built on lies it can never work Uncle Comrade said it there 30 years ago. We see what is happening on this issue. Today, nothing is done. And it is going to continue like that unless Nigeria now, and Nigerians are bold enough to sit back, sit down, discuss and how, on how they are going to you know, live and stay in Nigeria. <coughs> God bless you. Yeah, thank, uh, thank, you. thank you very, very much for uh, calling in. It, 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 this goes back to what we had said earlier about not being able to call a spade a spade. When you want to use fewer words, one will suffice. Corruption, Corruption. is the truth of this whole matter. I, I, I guess everybody has their own idea as to why things are the way they are because the first thing is that we're not going to be sincere from the very, very beginning. From the, let, that, that is where we start from. We're not going to be sincere. From There's going to be all sorts of sophistry now to cover that up and make it seem as if it's not too bad. Now, we don't, people don't speak as plainly as this, but that, I think, is really what's going on there. I don't, it, it's, it's like, we're just not ready. It's like, no, you can't do that. You, you can't do that. You can't say that. And I, it's not just here. I know that I, I, I see that it happens to various aspects of our, of our daily life when there's a decisive matter that needs to be taken, a decisive decision, 
and then we spend all sorts of time talking around it, summits. We know, we know, we know what is know the, the right thing, but we're, we're busy with summits, we're busy, we're busy with... <laughs> and I also feel that's where uh, the concept of social revolution comes in. It doesn't mean people carrying guns. I'll give you an instance. No matter how defective Gaddafi's tenure may be or how he came in, but you know what he did? He nationalized all the oil asset of Libya. People said there was no homelessness in, uh, no, in no, Libya. I've been nobody, there. You know, nobody nobody pays for I, I mean, can you just imagine that nobody idea? Nobody for any for house. Nobody's. That every single person has a house. Yeah, I've been there five times in Libya. You will see the, at the airport written boldly that welcome to Libya where there is no landlord and no tenant. Down. So you pay. <laughs> so tell me, tell me, I will have more oil than, 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 than Libya. So what it means is that, let's start from... But people say that Libya is also infinitely, testimonially smaller than Nigeria. Population is an advantage. And that is why people don't get it. Yes. It's supposed to be an advantage. It's okay. not a cost. Uh, Mazi Okorafo, good morning. Good morning, Sayori. Good morning, our guests in the studio. Good morning. Is Sayori and our guests in this year. Nigeria and all you producing countries should be among the advanced countries in this world. Very soon, I'm talking about the Asian languages as an independent country. Look at what happened in Iran, an oil producing country, Tunisia, oil producing country. Today, check Ghana, you see what happened. Three people are aware of it. Now, the colonial master said did no program activities in Nigeria the way it should go. That is why in Nigeria we have what to call oil boom in those days, oil gloss and oil doom. Where do we find ourselves today as a country? You see, Subsidy or no subsidy, we should enjoy the free gifts of the nation. That is O I M O I M. This is a country that God gave us. Nobody uh, 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 said it's, it's a mistake to be in this country, or God made a mistake to give us O I M. But the thing is, that how are we managing the resources? That is the issue. Like what is the first call I just rightly said about what is happening in Ghana? What is okay. Ghana came here and borrowed from us. You see how they are moving. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day in Lagos. Indeed, thank you very much. I think the first thing is to nationalize all those oil wells. The ownership, let the people, government, owns those oil wells. Well, that we start from there. That's, well, look, that's pretty revolutionary. Yeah, somehow. Uh, uh, <laughs> and if it happens, that's quite that, radical. That, that, that is change. And yes, that, 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 that would be changed. Change. That would be changed. Exactly. This, this is the way it wasn't because, before. Because, as I said, the oil mismanagement started from day one. Exactly. So, if whatever will turn around. That's what the and make said. the things to be better. That's change. Another democratic management. Now, I told and, you and, and, I did a study comparing NNPC with Petrobras. And even this Ghana that just uh, discovered oil uh, just a uh, few years ago. And as I was in, my, in the course of my study, I tried to find out the capital out there, whatever they are, what they are getting and what, you know, and the rest of them. Now, if you go to the Petrobras website, you see details of what finances, how much they get, they, you see about two or three years, comparative. You go to the NPC website, what do you have there? No information. <laughs> there's, no, there's no information. I went to Ghana and website, this year, oil, they, what they have gotten, everything is there. <laughs> So nobody yeah, yeah. in Nigeria knows how yeah. much, no, how no, much knows. we make from oil. No, we don't know. Nobody. Sir, honestly, sir, before now and, and up to now, call Minister for Finance, Pe Minister for Petrol, Central Bank Governor, they will give you different pictures mm -hmm. of that was what oil that was when, when, when Okay, one second, please. Uh, Divine, different, uh, thank you for holding on. Good morning. Yeah, yeah good morning, Chief Yori. Please go ahead now. Yeah, uh, Chief Yori, I want to say that Nigeria is a country has stolen something. Yeah, I want to say that Nigeria is a country that has stolen the oil from the owners. And the, and the, and the Nigerians have stolen it themselves. <laughs> now, I want to say that this oil is, is made for all Nigerians. Yes, sir. And is now being pulled by single individuals. And it's not supposed to be so. Now, how can one man stand and say that Nigerians have agreed to do something, one man will say they will not do it. Because we, we don't have a, a, a serious minded people that will stand against the government. Now, we say we want to restructure this country, one man will tell you that there's nothing like restructuring. Then, how will it work? They stole this oil from Niger Delta. Okay, thank you very much um, for your 
call as well. Well, we, we can just, the, 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 the frustrating you know, situation is that you're asking questions that are really rhetorical. Since day one, it has been mismanaged. There have been changes of government. Nobody has deemed it fit to fix that. To fix it. Fix it along the line. And till, till, till where we have now. And this one they're telling us about Ghana. I imagine people, maybe, um, maybe I'm being a bit overly dramatic. I just imagine Nigerian people concerned hissing in, in disdain. That is in Ghana. Nobody's going to publish anything here. Um, no, I'm not saying that anybody ever said that, but it, it does seem to be the kind of attitude we have. It may be okay for them, but we have how we do ours here. And unfortunately, uh, it seems that we're down with it. We're, we're happy with it. Otherwise, the people would have reacted. I'm not happy with it. But, but you, <laughs> Shabi, you, uh, you saw what happened on television when they said in Sudan they increased the price of bread. Yeah. Yeah? The price of bread went up. Yeah. Bread, you know. A, you, see, you, you saw what happened. You see, it's a matter of time. So, it's, but, a, it's, a, it's a matter of time. Consciousness builds on the basis of people's experience and mistakes. Mm -hmm. Now, people that believed there was a change. They know there's no change now. That is consciousness. Well, the I, question will be asked now is I, I, what I, next? I, I and this is where far, the socialist party is I there and go, other parties that are I wouldn't in, in go that, as far that, as that, are or, or, that there is no change now. I wouldn't go up. My, I personally wouldn't go as far. Okay, it's, that's a, change it's, it's a work in progress. Five naira to one forty-six naira now. <laughs> it's also a change. <laughs> it's uh, um, it's Josephine. Change. Thank you for holding on, Josephine. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Ayari. Thank Uncle Yari you. and your guest. Thank you, ma'am. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Please go ahead with your comment. So, me, I, I want to comment this uh, issue. The, it bleeds my heart. Mm -hmm. Because this government came uh, in, with the promise that they are going to change this. This will not work the same way it works. I uh, remember 2012, when the same, this issue of uh, fuel and the rest came up, when Jonathan said they want to deregulate and uh, there are cabals, if they don't fight this cabal, that's how we are going to suffer. So many people went at, that uh, they, went for, uh, they went for protesting at Tesla Balogun Stadium. Mm -hmm. And I think the same this government that, that came to power and said things are not going to work the same way, that they are going to change things for us, for we Nigerians to benefit. We are buying fuel at 87 naira, and they told us they want to increase it so that all the issue of subsidy will not come up, and that mm -hmm. only the, the price is deregulated itself. At the end of the day, when they deregulate, by that time we'll be buying fuel cheaper than what we are buying now. Then what are we getting? The president took the position of the of, um, Minister of Petroleum. Because it's so many fraud there. Then what we are seeing now, it's not terrible to Nigeria. It's not doing what they are supposed to do. There are many fraud in NMPC. Why is this keep, keeping quiet in this uh, NMPC fraud? How can you say you, your land because it's 171 and the, the, the many money is, they, they manage the not subsidies. They are paying subsidies, they are lying to Nigeria. They are fraud there. NMPC is the biggest fraud. They should deregulate, they should pass the PRB. The PRB for law, if you pass it, all this problem will not come. They know they, they are just beating around the bush. Mm. And the president has disappointed Nigeria. Because you cannot come into power and tell people you want to change. Look what they, uh, they said in their, their, their uh, 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 manifesto. They said they would build refineries, but this time we are not expected to be doing it. It's okay. wrong for us to suffer for what we have. Mm. President should do the right thing, and I bet you. If they have failed us, 2019, all this rubbish will not happen. If competent stands to come, they don't, have, they don't have the political will to carry us along. They don't have it. They all should right. give space to who, those people that are competent to rule us. They should give peace, a, a place for them to rule us well. We are, we are suffering for what we have. It's not fair. Okay, so okay Josephine. Appreciate your call. Uh, and I, I did let Josephine vent, you know, be, because... Really, I, I imagine she's speaking the voice of, uh, many, of people. many, many people. Um, uh, but as I said, in relation to what you said, comrade, I wouldn't go as far as saying that no change. Perhaps it hasn't been as 
discernible or if you want as dramatic as people would have liked given the hype with which politicians are want to talk especially during campaigns so I don't know if they overstated the matter a bit. Now that they're in office, they're probably finding out. In fact, not probably. They did say that they were prepared that it was going to be a long haul, but they never knew it was as bad as it was. That's on the one side. But as Josephine was saying in there, and as you said from the very beginning, you gentlemen said in here, if you arrive in office and find that it's an almost impossible task to do what we why don't you present the facts? And you can't just present like you're presenting to a bunch of dummies. You, you, you're going to have to state facts that people can relate with you and know that these are the people holding down our wealth. These are the people, this is where the, there's a bottleneck. This is where this is happening. Uh, we, we, we are hampered. We can't move forward because of the law, because of this. I mean, oftentimes when, when, when governors want to put up bridges, they will tell you that we've been at it for four years because we can't just go in there and knock things down. We have to settle people. We have to go to court. We have to get agreement. So at least they are explaining what some of the problems are. Now, on a national level, I don't know that the explanations have been satisfactory because it hasn't been transparent. Thank you. Um, you see, I always ask this question, even when we're in discussions. I say Nigeria did not start today. Uh, hold, hold the thought okay. uh, so that you can continue. Uh, let me bring in Mr. Owolabi in Egweda. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Mr. Yari. Thank you for calling in. Go ahead, please. The, the president has failed us. And we as a citizen, we need our own civil rights right now. And our civil rights now is our PFC. If we continue like this, in 2020, is a shame on us. We won't have the government to blame anymore. We have to stood on our toes right now to vote the bad government. Not your councillor, not your senator, not everyone going into power that they have the wills of the masses in Pakistan. This is so alarming. Nigeria is becoming so something now. Shame now like this we could debate. Thank you, Mr. We have a pleasure day. Oh, and Ed, thank you very much. You said the president has failed us. I mean, uh, maybe he's still, he's still at it. I don't know. You might have said as of now, you know, the president is failing, but anything can happen. You, these plans take time to unfold. They have not been twiddling their thumbs. Uh, so you never know. You never know. We still, we, we still have a bit to go. Uh, 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 we still have a bit to go. Even, uh, and these problems, you know, they've, you've been saying they, they've been there for decades. Like, How do you undo it overnight? Probably is the problem. Eh, well, like I told uh, one Nabobaku, I mean, sorry. Sorry, I uh, interrupted you. I'm you aware of the fact it took uh, over, this tongue, but I'm coming back to this you. This one of these tongue coat uh, activists that were protesting against what they are supporting now. I always tell people look, don't ever place your life on the hand of any activist or so called. It's a collective struggle. It's not a question of ah, so people fought for us, they fought for us uh, sometimes in Ajota, they are not fighting for us again. No! They have reached their terminal end. Why? Because they don't have alternative vision. What is happening today is that this present government, like the previous one, has claimed its own victims from the, from the wing of human rights and pro-democracy activism. You ask them where they come around. So what to be done now is for individual to appreciate and organizationally appreciate the power of your vote and of course migrate towards parties with alternative agenda. Okay, I hear you. Now, <laughs> Doctor, I did interrupt you, so yes, I'm, um, you know. I, always, I have always be Because said, in relation to what Comrade has just finished saying, uh, I wonder, the, the way we are structured politically, there are people who are going to as it were, make certain that only certain people uh, arrive in office. First of all, they are going to select the pool it, through a due political process. Uh, so this whole matter about taking our destiny into our own hands, not until you have something of a radically minded person who is also a power broker uh, that, that can sweep all. I don't know if as I'm using those words, anybody is occurring to you that ah, that is the kind of guy who could do it. It's just a matter of people make Hey, slowly, they will tell you this is much more complicated. It's life for you. Yeah, um, I have said that most of the problems we have in Nigeria did not start today. They started, I always tell people, they started on October 1, 1960. 
That's when all these problems started. <laughs> and here we are, yes. 2018. Yes. Yes. And we're still saying yes. what we could have said the day after oh, October yeah. 1, 1960. Yes. It won't be yes. you know, <laughs> let, let me quickly bring in Mr. George as our last caller. Good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you for calling in. Uncle Yori, I think it would be better to keep your speakers uh, within the ambit of the subject of the day. Those who want to campaign for 2019, they are free to go and organize rallies or go on, you know, pay for airspace and do that. They are free to do that. But so you think some of the comments are unfair then? Yes. Okay. Coming back to the issue of subsidy on Kuyori, I think the whole thing is being orchestrated by the National Assembly for selfish reasons. Why am I saying this? The National Assembly, the, the purpose of a government is essentially to subsidize the standard of living for the people. The National Assembly, I didn't know they were subsidized. Mm -hmm. Up to the dresses they wear, up to the newspapers they read, it's all subsidized. Where is the subsidy in this case? The subsidy is in the, in the sense that NNPC only went into this what looks like a subsidy during this crisis period. The, the, the crude that was exported, they now told those who are to supply them the finished product to take the excess of it from it when the um, uh, oil price went up. This thing has not taken even two months. What I expected a responsible National Assembly to do was to call the people in charge at the NNPC. Okay, if you were pushed to do this, bring up a proposal for it to be regularized. Have they investigated to determine the extent of fraud, if there is any? Mm -hmm. This has not been done. People are just banking where there is no need for it. Okay, Thank Mr. You. George, I've got to thank you very much for your call and um, uh, putting that caveat in there that, look, there's also another way to see that and all of this could well be orchestrations of opposition. Yeah. You know, um, uh, yeah. Let me, say something. Let, me, let me say something on this, uh, because we are talking on this probing. Yeah, but uh, we, you only have about half, half a minute. Okay. The point is, from if it is my own opinion, let it be. Mm. We are not talking about, we are not, I'm, I'm, I am not against subsidy. I'm not against it. I say, let it be my own opinion. Because maybe the subsidy is the only thing Nigerians are getting at the end of the day from no. this oil. Otherwise, we are getting nothing. <laughs> That's so, another direction. The, so that's a different, uh, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, it's embedded in the whole thing. Now, the National Assembly should not be just interested in go, uh, attack NNPC for doing what it's supposed to do, maybe doing it in a wrong way. Yeah. Many things have been done in a wrong way. Okay. Okay. Okay, I, let I me stop you. it there. Let, let it, thank you very much. Uh, we've completely run out of time. I'm, I'm even can be as fair as to say that. Comrade, take your own half a minute as well. I'm sorry. I've completely run out of time. Comrade Adiola Shweton, Dr. Luke Onyekekea, uh, thank you very much. Um, well, I guess what we say in Nigeria is uh, uh, a luta continua. And I suppose Victoria has to be accepted. You know, so there you go. That's our program for today and indeed the week. We'll see you on Monday, God willing, with a fresh edition. Uh, please join us then. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Thank you.